In today's tutorial, you'll learn how to build and deploy a website on Cloudflare Pages for free. I'll show you exactly step-by-step step how I took this WordPress website, converted it into a static website and deployed it on Cloudflare Pages. Static websites have huge advantages in terms of speed, security, reliability, low maintenance and cost effectiveness. In this case, free. So if all this sounds interesting, then keep watching. For this demonstration, I'll be using a WordPress website. This is the one here that we'll be doing. I've hosted it on Test Ideaspot site, but any WordPress uh, hosting will work for this. You could even host uh, WordPress locally on your own machine with something like local WP and um, create the site that way. But I'm just using WordPress because it's the most popular at the moment, but any kind of static site will do for this tutorial. Now for a WordPress website, we'll convert it to a static website first by using a plugin called Simply Static. So you can get that from plugins, add new plugin and search the WordPress repository for Simply Static, install and activate that one. Once Simply Static is installed and active, go to the settings. Now just make sure replacing URLs is set to relative path. That should be the default, but just check that and then click generate. And if we head to our activity log and you'll get a download link for your website here. Now this can take a long time on a very large website. I've just used a very small test website here so I can download it fairly quickly. So in my downloads folder, I've got my Simply Static uh, version of the website here. And this is what we're going to upload to Cloudflare a little later in the video. Now you want to log into your Cloudflare account. So go to cloudflare.com and log in. Obviously sign up if you don't already have a free Cloudflare account. I'm just using the free version to do this. And from our dashboard, we're going to add a page that, that is here under Add Pages. So here is where we will upload our website. So we're going to use the direct upload feature here. We can name our project. I'll just call mine Ideaspot dash test and create the project. So this is where you upload the files for your website onto Cloudflare. So you just drag a folder or a zip file into Cloudflare to upload. In our case, we have the static website generated by Simply Static as a zip file here. So we can conveniently just drop that on there and it will upload. Just wait a second for that to finish. So after a few seconds, you get a green success message here. We can click deploy here and then we can hit continue. So far, so good. Just a word of warning here. If you click visit, it's not going to work straight away. So just come back in a few minutes and we'll continue the tutorial. All right. So after a few minutes, let's click visit here. And this is fine now. So we can have a look around here and uh, it's all loading up just fine. So just check your website. It's working OK. And let's continue with our next step, which is the custom domain here. So by default, Cloudflare is going to give you a pages.dev domain. So we can actually add any domain we want here through this custom domain feature. So set up the custom domain. So I'll use one I registered earlier called Ideaspot Space for this demonstration. Let's go ahead and click continue. So to use a custom domain on Cloudflare, you need to transfer the DNS management over to Cloudflare. So let's begin that process. So I will be using Ideaspot Space for this example. And let's go ahead and do that. It's going to try and sell you a pro plan or business plan, but this works totally fine on the free plan. So scroll down until you find the free plan, select that one and click continue. That's going to import all your DNS settings here. We just scroll down and continue to activation here. So this is our last step. Update your name service to activate Cloudflare. If you bought your domain name directly from Cloudflare, you won't need to do this. But for those of us who bought our domain from Namecheap or GoDaddy or Porkbun or something, you'll need to do this step. All we have to do is copy these records here and put them into our DNS manager. Um, they do have provider specific instructions here. So if you follow that link here and click that link there, you'll get um, instructions for all the different domain registrars like Bluehost or GoDaddy, whatever. Um, in my case, I'm using Namecheap. So I'll just copy the first one here, head over to Namecheap here, and we're gonna head to uh, name servers. So we're gonna use custom DNS paste that first one in there. And then we want to grab the second one there. So copy that, head back to Namecheap, paste that one in there. And that's all we need. We click the tick there and that looks all good, but that's how you do it on Namecheap. If you're using something else, they've got those provider specific instructions um, as I showed you earlier. So once that's done, we can go down and click continue. Now this is not going to work straight away. It takes 15 to 30 minutes usually to transfer a DNS. In the worst case, it can take 24 to 72 hours even. So as you're waiting for this, you can actually check on dnschecker.org, um, put in your domain there and hit search. Um, it's going to show the original IP of the website, but after a while it will show Cloudflare IP addresses. Now those will be two IP addresses. Um, and if we hit refresh, it'll eventually start showing them. So I'm going to come back after 15 minutes and I'll show you what I mean. All right. So the 15 minute break turned into a three hour lunch with my wife, but anyway, I'm back and sure enough, this should be ready to go. So let's have a look. All right, so here it looks like the DNS has propagated across the world. We've got these two IPs here. These are Cloudflare IPs. You can actually just click it and check. It'll show up as a uh, as a Cloudflare IP here. So you can actually see 
But anyway, that looks all good, except for like one country here. That'll take its time, but eventually they'll all um, churn over. So we can head back over to our Cloudflare setup and we've got uh, check name servers now, and that should be okay. And let's just refresh our page and see if that helps. Here we go. It's got the green tick here. It says, uh, great news, Cloudflare is protecting your site. So now we should be able to set this up with our website. So we can head back to our dash and then under uh, compute, we'll find our workers and pages there. We've got ideas test here and we can do our custom domain now. So we go here. And now the idea spot space is set up in Cloudflare. We should be able to add that to our Cloudflare page here. So that's confirmed. We click activate and we'll get this initialization message for a little while. And that will change to verifying after a bit. And after a couple more minutes, it'll change green to active. So we should be able to open up a new tab and go for idea spot space. And we've got our website here. This is running on Cloudflare pages now with a custom domain. So this is going to be hosted completely for free. Really good performance as well, um, running on Cloudflare pages uh, for a free static host. This is a great option. Let's talk about the pros and cons of using Cloudflare pages. Obviously, Cloudflare is very fast. You've got hundreds of nodes all over the world serving your page to your visitors. So extremely good performance, especially for free, no cost, except for the domain cost, which is um, inherent in any website. So um, that's really not a big deal. Secure is, I think that's a really big point because uh, by taking away the back end, the content management system and all the server security, you don't have to worry about any of that. It's just a static front end. So the actual security footprint becomes very small and it's behind Cloudflare. So it's uh, really well done in terms of security. Um, low maintenance, so you don't have to worry about theme updates, plugin updates. You've just got a static site. It's going to be set and forget basically. So um, very low maintenance. In terms of cons, probably the main thing is you need your dynamic content hosted elsewhere. For example, a contact form, rather than having a WordPress contact form, you just embed a um, external contact form into the HTML. I'll talk about that in a second. Also updating the site is a bit less convenient than using a CMS like WordPress. Um, the pro version of Simply Static can help resolve these things, but again, that comes with cost. I'll also briefly cover the limits here on Cloudflare pages. So the, probably the main one is the file size, 25 meg file limit and 20,000 files per site. So those are the main limits you've got to work around. I think there's going to be plenty for most of our projects, uh, 25 meg, unless you want to host large videos. I think you have to host the videos elsewhere, but most people do that anyway. Um, custom domains, you're going to have 100 free uh, domains hosted on there. So you can basically have a hundred custom domain websites on your free plan. So very generous in terms of their limits. There's a few other limits in terms of headers and redirects, but I think the main one is probably 25 meg is going to be okay for uh, most documents and images, but probably not video. So that's really the only thing to be aware of. A few options for adding your dynamic content to the static site. You can use Google Forms, Microsoft Forms, JotForm, Typeform, Zoho Forms. I'd also add Formable. I've been trying that lately. It's pretty good. Um, E-commerce, you've got Equid, Snipcart, PayHip, PayPal buttons, and Stripe checkouts that you can embed onto the site to give you e-commerce functionality. There's probably loads of other options as well. These are just a few examples I could think of off the top of my head. And in terms of conclusions, excellent solution for zero cost high performance hosting. It's probably best suited for basic pages that don't need a lot of di dynamic features. And uh, we're talking about brochure websites, local businesses, portfolio type websites, a uh, really good way of hosting a fairly static, low maintenance website. The alternative to doing this is GitHub pages, which I've covered on the channel before. I've put my GitHub pages tutorial up on the end screen here, but let me know what you think in the comments if you have any questions, but thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.